Tucked inside Oakwood Cemetery in Statesville. I remember very vividly, we'd see how high we could get. A young Rob Lee would climb this historic tree, a tree with roots grown here long before souls were buried beneath. It was never very high as a kid, but now we can get pretty high too uh, up here. Rob heard stories of his family tree branch by branch. The first stories I heard uh, came out of a family Bible that we have um, that had records in it. As many old Southern Bibles do, there's records that trace back to the dawn of time. I remember hearing that I had an uncle, generations removed. It was always clear that I was not like a grandkid. Like I, this was an uncle type figure um, who was both part of the conversation in my life, but part of the national conversation too. One branch with a name nearly identical to his. The first memories I have of talking about the, the famous ancestor Confederate General Robert E. Lee was during trips here and then to my grandmother's house with my Nana Lee, Barbara, who told us the stories of our family. I mean, that was kind of her job. She felt it incumbent upon her to tell the stories of what it meant to be a Lee. Robert Wright Lee related to Robert E. Lee. Growing up, the questions would come. Thinking they'd have a fellow compatriot, they'd say, oh, the South will rise again. This is not what I'm after with my name. By middle school, though, Rob Lee began to feel differently about his family history. Well, I was already experiencing a call to some sort of ordained ministry in which I would be serving the church. And that night in the fellowship hall of my church, uh, this woman of color asked me about my relationship to Robert E. Lee. And I told her, I told her that I had a Confederate flag in my room. I told her I had a postcard that I'd gotten from Arlington Cemetery of him, framed and right beside my bed. And her courage in this moment should not be, um, I cannot underscore her courage in this moment because what she said was, honey, you've got to take that flag down. If you want to be called to ministry, you have to take that flag down. So for me, it was an obvious like moment of like, wait a second, something's wrong here. But I remember I took down that flag that night because she was right. And in my heart, I knew she was right. So what do we got here? So this is my family uh, through the years, my actual line of the family. The Lee name etched in stone here, but Rob Lee started to etch a new story in 2015. I remember the night that it happened um, when people were shot at Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston. And the rest is me sitting at my computer and furiously typing out a piece to a large news outlet in which I said, my name's Robert Lee. Here are my concerns. And I remember the next day I got a call from the Huffington Post asking to be on a podcast. And, and, and I, I hardly knew what to say, but I mustered the courage and talked to him. And I said, uh, said a lot of things um, about the need for a different kind of world. And it was as if a fire was lit within me that said, hey, now's the time. <laughs> In 2017, after a white nationalist rally in Charlottesville where a woman was killed, Lee spoke up again, now as a pastor, which led to a call from the MTV Video Music Awards. They said, we're happy to write the speech for you um, that night, for that night. I said, actually, I'd like to write it. Um, let me give it a stab. You can edit it as you may. Sent it back with no edits. My name is Robert Lee IV. I'm a descendant of Robert E. Lee the Civil War general whose statue was at the center of violence in Charlottesville. What I said that night was from the heart, that if we don't have this conversation now, it's never gonna happen. We have made my ancestor an idol of white supremacy, racism, and hate. As a pastor, it is my moral duty to speak out against racism, America's original sin. Applause at the awards, but not everyone embraced his message. We've had people shoot at our house. We have had threats, both veiled and direct. Um, we've had confrontations. Life changed overnight. Um, I was quickly realizing that going in front of 5.64 million people that night was going to be something that not only um, changed the course of my week, but my year and life. Reverend Lee appeared on The View, talking Robert E. Lee statues and anything named in his honor. In your opinion, should they all come down or should the name be removed off of all of those things? I do because I think about it this way. Um, my white child may not have trouble going to that school, 
but a black child might. Good morning, everybody. He preached at Jimmy Carter's Sunday school. The chair now recognizes Reverend Robert Wright Lee, descendant of the Confederate General Robert E. Lee. Reverend Lee even took his mission to Congress. We cannot remain complicit with these monuments. We cannot remain silent anymore. If we do so, our silence becomes agreement and endorsement to complicity. I believe in a Virginia that studies its past in an honest way. In 2020, he stood next to Virginia Governor Ralph Northam when he announced the removal of the Robert E. Lee statue on Monument Avenue in Richmond. I did not expect that to happen in my lifetime. I thought my daughters might get to go to a parade one day and see it taken down and, and get to celebrate their dad and the work he did to start the conversation. But for me to get to go and stand on the pedestal and say this thing's coming down to a group of onlookers, I mean, that, that, that changed my life because it showed me what's possible when a group of people who believe in something actually make it happen. And in fact, a few weeks ago, uh, I took my daughters up to Monument Avenue and showed them the place where Lee once stood. And if that wasn't the most surreal moment of this whole experience, I don't really know what it is. Reverend Lee was famous, made a lot of friends, but a lot of enemies too. But I quickly realized the truth is that people are still set in their ways. I had friends that were in my wedding um, that no longer talked to me um, because they thought that what I was doing was grandstanding. For all the accolades, there was hate and even confusion after the MTV appearance. You were essentially forced to resign from your church. How do you explain that? I explain it because churches are fickle friends. Um, I, I've gone through a lot with that. Uh, at first I was really angry and really confused why this community of faith who had hired me suddenly disagreed with me on such a visceral level that they wanted me gone. And I honestly think that that's why people think Christians are hypocrites. Because we're so busy trying to silence the people who, had, who, who need to be heard. Uh, not only in the pulpits, but in the pews too. The most frightening moment after another MTV appearance. I was actually on an MTV special after the MTV Awards in which I interviewed two daughters of Reverend Doctor, who was a victim at Mother Emanuel. Thank you so much for having the courage to share your story with us today. A white nationalist named Nick Fuentes also appeared on the show and called out Reverend Lee. A descendant of Robert E. Lee, like, listen, son, your ancestors were heroes. And that night, I remember hearing um, from my house uh, shots that were fired at our house. I, I, I didn't move. I couldn't move. Um, I went out the next day. Our security sign had been pulverized. Um, we found shell casings in the road. Um, we knew what this was. Be quiet or else. And that was a little unnerving, to say the least. but it didn't stop me. Nothing like that will ever stop me. But in 2021, the Washington Post challenged his family tree connections. It seems to me that there was one journalist that was uh, misguided by his resources. Um, and that was painful at first. It made me question a lot. It made me question family ties, it made me question my own work. But then I quickly realized something about his article that he missed. Even if the man is correct, which he's not, we've had genealogists and other articles that have come out since proving my connections to Lee. Even if he is correct, I have people who enslaved other people in my history. To me, the work continues regardless. How do you refer to him at now as a relative? I call myself a collateral descendant, which is what I've always referred to myself as, meaning that I am not a grandson, so I don't come directly down. I come more down off the side, if you will, from a, from a, a relative. Um, I've, I've been clear about that in all of my writings. God is ready. God is calling. Nearly six years later, now 30 years old, Reverend Lee continues to write and travels the country. These past few weeks, I've been in uh, Charlotte and Chicago and um, uh, Boston. Uh, doing some incredible work with some incredible churches, helping to guide them through conversations uh, that lead to substantive change in their communities. Uh, but most importantly for me right now is I get to be a dad. 
Um, in 2021, my wife, Stephanie, and I adopted two amazing daughters who are now four and five. And if that's not a full-time job, I don't know what is. <laughs> Reverend Lee's been active in politics, too, appearing at events for the Biden-Harris campaign. White supremacy is wrong. It is evil. It is going to hell. Now, if a, if a descendant of Robert E. Lee can say that, why can't our president say that? He gave the prayer for President Biden's inaugural prayer service. Almighty God, kindle, we pray in every heart, the true love of peace. Now, people may be saying, I don't want my pastor to get political. I actually think the pulpit is inherently political. I believe what we're talking about now, these issues at hand, are things that need to be talked about in the churches. If we are not talking about these issues right now, we should leave church because we're doing church wrong. This church thing, this whole religious institution thing, uh, is meant to show that God's kingdom could happen here. And that means that racism would be gone. That means that homophobia and transphobia would not be in the vocabulary of our people, but instead love would be in the vocabulary of our people. My great-grandparents are right over there. Back at Oakwood Cemetery, pondering the past, the conversation turns to the future. I hope and pray I have a lot of life left in me and can continue to, to have this conversation. But it's hard to have a conversation when you're just you. You need a conversation partner. There are people that could be changed and opinions could be changed. And we need to have those conversations. And it's incumbent on people like me who look like me, who are white people, to, especially around race, to have those conversations now. L-E-E, -E, Lee, three letters from a family tree that thrust Reverend Robert W. Lee to fame, but created turmoil as well. I had just one more question. Have you ever thought about changing your name? You know, there's this moment when, um, when you're adopting kids where you have to put their last name, their le new legal last name on a piece of paper and sign it before a court. When I was doing that for Athena and Phoenix, I remember very, this is a vivid memory of me as I was signing, I got their first name, got their middle name, and I froze at their last name because it was, Lee, am I gonna put this burden on my children? I could, I, I could name anything for that matter now. This is my moment, this is my moment to change it. And then I realized that God has given me a moment for such a time as this, to change the conversation about the man named Robert Lee because my name is Robert Lee. I think it would be different if my name was different. Um, and to the girls' points, I, I finally did put Lee at the end. Why? because they're gonna do greater things than me or Robert E. Lee. And I'm confident in that. And it's in that confidence that I was able to say, you know what, we may have this name and this heritage, but it is not the fullness of our story and it doesn't, and it never will be. Because we've got a new story we're currently writing that's far more uh, compelling to me than anything Robert E. Lee ever did. The burden of the past resting on his shoulders, but the promise of the future in his daughter's hands. As the story of this family tree continues with a new generation. Thank you.